KW is about to go live with Gmail and transfer all the at KW.com accounts to Gmail accounts, I thought we'd go ahead and sign in, since we can already sign in. It's not quite fully functional yet. Um, you're not actually receiving emails or any of your old emails to your at KW.com Gmail inbox yet, but we will um, very shortly, the 11th or 12th of November. So basically, in order to log into your new Gmail account with at kw.com, what you want to do is just go to gmail.com and fill in the information. So you want your full at kw.com address. You have to add the at kw.com part on the, the end of it. And then your password is going to be the same password that you're using for my kw. So however you log into my kw, that's the password you need in order to log into your new Gmail account. So once you've gotten that all in, then you're just going to click on sign in. And there we go. So we have our new um, Keller Williams Gmail account. So it looks basically just like a regular Gmail inbox except for the Keller Williams logos that you'll find um, throughout the site. So I do want to show you something else for those of you who uh, weren't able to get to that screen that we were just at before. If it automatically um, logged you into your Gmail account, I'm going to show you what you can do. So let's say I go to gmail.com and instead of taking me to that screen where I can log in, it takes me automatically to my Gmail account. That's because I keep myself logged in usually with this Gmail account all the time. So if this is true for you as well, what you want to do is just add a second Gmail account to it. So you're going to click on your picture up here at the top right, or if you don't have a picture, it means you just haven't added a picture yet. So you probably have your email address right up here at the top right. And you're just going to click there and choose Add Account. So once you choose Add Account, you're just going to do the exact same steps that we just did a second ago. And once you've signed in, what will happen when we click back up here, you'll see that you now have two separate Gmail accounts open. And you can kind of go back and forth between the two if you'd like to. You can keep them both open at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to go back over to where we were <clears throat> in our Gmail inbox or our new KW email inbox. Now, if you don't have an at kw.com address or you're not using your at kw.com address, you can follow the same steps in this tutorial to add or change your signature in your regular Gmail account because both of the um, inboxes or both of the, the Gmail, you know, the Gmail and the Keller Williams are going to look the same and have the same functions. Okay, so you can follow along with us. All right, so let's go ahead and get our signature started. What you want to do is click on this little gear symbol right here in the top right. And we're going to choose Settings. Okay, and we're in the General tab. We're just going to scroll down a little bit. Now, I've already added a picture. Um, what I'm going to do is delete this because I've already added this. All right, I've already added my picture. Um, if you want to add your picture, it just gives a little visual representation of yourself and all the emails that you send to everyone. You can change it to visible to everyone so that whenever you send an email, they'll get a little image of you. Um, or you can just keep it visible to just people you chat with. All right, so I'm going to change that. Now for the signature part, what you want to do is just click in this box and we are going to add our signature. So for example, you may want to have your name, your Keller Williams office, I'm going to put my exact office. Okay, you want to have your office address, which I'm not going to add right now because I don't know it off the top of my head. You're going to want to add your phone number probably as well. Um, and one important thing that you definitely want to add is your website address. So if you have your website URL or website address, what you want to do is type it in there. And you're going to highlight the whole thing and just click on this little button that looks like a chain that says link. And that should create you a link if you've typed it in correctly. So in order to check yourself, what you want to do is just click on go to link and it's going to open up whatever you've typed in. So if your website comes up, then you've done it correctly. If something else comes up or you get an error, then you've done something incorrectly and you need to change it. Now you can also add different, you know, other different URLs if you want to um, add your Facebook URL, for example. We could put click here to visit me on Facebook. And then I'm just going to grab that whole thing. 
and find my Facebook URL. So when you go to your Facebook and you actually click on yourself, you can get your profile. And right up here at the top, that'll be your address. Now, if you were going to use your Facebook, you know, one of your Facebook pages, you could also do that. I'm going to use my business page. So I can go to my business page, and again, I have a URL right up there. I can just copy all of that and come back. Okay, and instead of actually typing that address in, what I'm going to do is highlight this part and click link. And it's going to ask me what URL I want to use. I'm just going to put that in there so that people don't have to see this whole URL because it's kind of ugly. And we're going to click OK. Now, if you've done it correctly, same thing. You can check it out. Just make sure. And, of course, it wouldn't go to the admin panel for someone who's visiting my site. It's only going there because I'm logged in. Okay, so that looks correct. So I can leave that there. All right, what I might want to do also is just kind of change this around. Let's put this in bold, for example. We can use italics if we want to. We can change the size of the font if we'd like to. Um, we can also change the font itself um, if we want it to be in a different, a different font. So you can kind of play around with that um, and just get something that you, you know, that you like. Now, the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of a splash of color, and we're going to add a Keller Williams logo in here right above. So what I'm going to do is just make a little space. Now in order to add images with your Gmail signature, you can't actually upload an image directly to Gmail. There is no way of doing that. So what you could do is, or what you have to do, is find an image that has a web address. That means that the image has to exist somewhere online, and it has to have an address for itself. So any image with an address you could insert there. Um, for example, what you might want to do if you have a photo bucket account or you have Picasa or you have any kind of storage online um, for files, what you can do is upload your logo or your picture there and then you can just find the, um, the image's actual address by right clicking on it. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now if you don't have any of those or you'd like me to just go ahead and walk you through it, what you can do is use your Keller Williams eAgency website to host that photo and to store it online for you so that you can use it in your email signature. So that's what we're going to do right now. You need to go to mykw.com and log in. Now KW has some new logos and graphics, so I'm just going to look at those and see if I can find something I want to use in my email. And I'm looking through them. Now some of these are going to have JPEG files and some of them will not have JPEG files. If you're going to be hosting on your eAgency website, you need a JPEG file, okay? So you can't use the PNG or the EPS files. So I happen to know that this one does have a JPEG file, so I'm going to go ahead and download it. And you're just going to click on Web to download the web images. Now my computer automatically downloads right here to the desktop, so that's very easy for me. I'm just going to click on it and make sure that I'm correct. There is a JPEG file in there. Now, if you downloaded something and there wasn't a JPEG file, then you'd probably have to just download another one and find a JPEG file. Okay, so that's going to work for me. I'm going to go back here, and we're going to log into our eAgency website. All right, basically what we're doing with our eAgency site is we're using the photo library in the eAgency to hold this picture for us online so that Gmail can find it. So we're just going to go to 1.0 and then 1.3, Manage Photo Library. Okay, once you're in there, we're going to browse for that file that we have on our computer. So... I've got to look on the desktop since that's where my, my picture is saved. So desktop, here we go, KW Full Color Web. And I'm going to select that JPEG file. Now the reason why I say PNG files won't work is they're just going to look bad on this, on this website. It doesn't actually upload them the same way it uploads a reverse color. So you, you know, while you technically can upload a PNG, it's not going to look good. So you definitely want to have JPEG files. So you're going to click OK and start that upload. All right, once it's uploaded, you're going to need to find that picture.
among your other pictures. All right, here we go. So we have the picture. What I'm going to do is right click on the image. And depending on the browser you're using, you're going to look for something different. If you're using Safari, it's going to say copy image address. If you're using others, it may say copy image URL or copy image location. If you're using Internet Explorer, it's going to say um, properties, and then you'll have to view the file info and copy that image address. But for most browsers, what you're going to do is just click on copy image address, location, or URL. Just click. Now it's copied it for us to the clipboard. We're not going to see anything. What we need to do is go back to Gmail and we're going to select that little mountain image that says insert image and we're going to right click and paste what we've just copied. Okay. So once we have it in there you can tell this is the image that I was that I wanted to have and it's there so I've done something right. I'm going to click on OK. All right, now this image is really, really large, so I want to resize it. So I'm just going to click on it, click on the image, and then I have choices for small, medium, or large. So I'm just going to put small. Okay, and now we have a smaller image. So if I want it to be larger, I can maybe do medium. I think I'm going to stay with the small. All right. So once you are, you know, you you're okay with what you've added, um, then you're going to click on this box if you'd like to have your signature always below everything that you say, even in a reply. Um, and then you're just going to click on Save Changes. Okay. So let's test what we've done. We're going to compose an email, and you can see that in this new email that I'm composing, I already have my signature added on there. And if I want to just check these things, what I can do is just go back and check them and see what's going on, make sure everything's okay. All right, so that looks good. My email signature is set up and I'm ready to go. Now the last little thing is a freebie that I just wanted to show you was how to access your Google Drive. So with our new Gmail um, inboxes, and even if you just have a personal Gmail account, you always have access to Drive, Google Drive. Um, and what you want to do is just click on these little boxes. You can access the drive icon. And from here, what you can do is start creating documents, presentations, spreadsheets, forms, drawings. Now, these will all exist online, so you can um, access them anywhere, not just from your own computer. And you can also share anything that you create on here. Now, of course, because this is being saved in the cloud, you don't want to share or save any kind of very sensitive information like passwords or things like that. Um, but you can definitely use it for uh, things like in our other article for the November newsletter, which is creating forms for an open house, for example, and sharing those. So I have actually shared um, this old open house form with myself just so I can show you. So this is a, you know, I just basically went through and created a form to get this. And once you create a form, you get actually two things. What you get is a spreadsheet in the back. It's going to open up and give you all the answers that you've gotten on your form. Um, and you also get the form itself. So I'm going to show you when we go to the live form, I'll show you what the form actually looks like if I were filling it out. Okay, And I could sit there on my computer and fill out all of those things if I were at an open house, um, if I were a customer, or if I'm the real estate agent and who is helping the customer to fill this out, which is a great you know, chance for you to have some dialogue with that customer. Um, you can also embed this form on a website. You can send it to people via email. And once you have all of the entries to the form, what you can do is go back to the back side of the form. You can email this if you wanted to send information um, to your sellers about what you know what prospective buyers at the open house felt about the the open house. So there's a lot of great stuff you can do with forms. They're very simple to create. You can create all different kinds of um, responses like uh, these 1 to 10s. You can do texts where people can write things in. You can have just boxes like this. Um, there's lots of different choices that you have and there's a great way, you know, it's a great way to create forms and use them at open houses and get some new customers for yourself. So I definitely recommend that you go ahead and go through Drive, kind of check out what, it, what exactly is available to you and try out forms next time you have an open house.